Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to talk a little bit more about our topic of heart disease because uh, that's obviously something that if we can uh, make sure we avoid that, then we can live to a reasonably ripe old age. The, uh, the issue I want to talk about today is to do with irregular heartbeat and arrhythmias where the heart starts to do some funny things, it loses its rhythm um, and um, the, the consequences of that. And, and, but more importantly, about the causes of it. Um, the, if you look at what, what is the heart, the heart is really just a large muscle that has an inbuilt uh, electrical component that provides the, the, the actual beating of the heart. So think of it as a large muscle with a, with a small electrical capability that drives the pumping action. And so uh, generally that works pretty well, but it can be upset occasionally by certain foods. Now it can obviously be affected by some physical condition of the heart, but in many cases people start to run into some strange heartbeat conditions as a result of chemicals that are being ingested or pharmaceuticals. And I want to talk about that because one of the problems when these things start happening is it has a domino effect. And I want to give you an example that uh, there's a chap that I know who uh, one day uh, his doctor prescribed cholesterol lowering medication and I said to him you know you need to watch out this for the side effects for that and he didn't actually come to see me uh, at my clinic but um, so I just knew him socially and anyway um, so he's taking cholesterol lowering medication and about a year later I heard that he was getting um, the arrhythmias which is a uh, effectively where the heart starts to um, a, a pump in a, in a sort of an unusual way and then sometime thereafter he had uh, fibrillation which is where the heart starts to quiver effectively it doesn't it doesn't just beat um, uh, at a sort of a high rate that we sometimes have um, it starts to actually vibrate and it's called fibrillation now that's actually quite a, a risky thing to have because it can cause clotting in the heart through that fibrillation action where the blood isn't flowing, it's almost stagnating in one place, which can, can then cause a clot. And so at that point, of course, they had to start taking warfarin. Um, and then subsequently was diagnosed with uh, being pre-diabetic and had to take a medication for that. Um, and my concern with people is that they start with one drug, in this case, it's cholesterol lowering medication which can lead to fibrillation, which then requires an even worse medication, which then degrades the functionality of the organs like the liver and the kidneys that can then lead to another condition. And at the end, we have someone who's sitting there every morning taking all these different pills. So the, the thing I want to talk about is, is, is irregular heartbeat for just today and uh, advise you of some things that you need to be aware of because that way you might be able to ni um, nip in the bud uh, any risks that you have in regards to this condition. In my view, if we put aside the mechanical issues of the heart, there, there are three um, situations which are quite, um, uh, which come up often in terms of irregular heartbeat. And the first one is, is cholesterol lowering medication. Remember, I mentioned to you before that, that cholesterol lowering medication firstly weakens muscle, okay? And the, and the heart is one big muscle. So if we weaken that muscle, then its ability to beat precisely can be impaired. But on top of that, I mentioned to you that the neurons and electrical signaling, which are the neurological system, is also impacted by cholesterol lowering medication. So in the heart, that very important point which causes the beat can also be degraded. Now, whether it's one or the other, the reality is that people who take cholesterol lowering medication may find one day that their heart starts to do some funny things. And then, of course, we need drugs to treat that, to, to tone down the, the, the heartbeat and, and so on. And so that's one of the causes that I've seen that leads to this condition. The other one is um, some of the sweeteners, for example, which uh, there are some books called, um, uh, which refer to them as, as neurotoxins uh, because they are tox uh, toxic to the neurons. Um, so some of the sweeteners in the low-calorie soft drinks and other uh, low-calorie drinks that we have 
are also affect the number of people um, with irregular heartbeat. And the, the third item that I've seen a lot of is a, a food preservative, which is number 282 on the list, which is um, calcium propionate, which is used in food to stop it from, uh, particularly bread, um, bread products, stops it from getting moldy. Good for the manufacturer to give it a long shelf life, not good for the consumer because it can provide a regular heartbeat. Any of those three can cause your heart to go a bit skewy. And some people, of course, you know, when your heart starts doing funny things, that's quite alarming. And they think it's actually the heart themselves without ever thinking that it may be due to certain chemicals that they've ingested or certain pharmaceuticals. So I just want to alert you today to the fact that, you know, be very conscious that if you get an episode like that, think about what you took sometime before the episodes and work backwards and, and, and consider eliminating those temporarily to see whether it fixes the problem. Because uh, you have to agree that if one didn't do that and the condition becomes somewhat threatening and one's doctor worrying about whether you know there may be something untoward or whether fibrillation may cause clotting and so on, immediately erring on the side of caution puts you on warfarin or something else, you know. And, and, and one gets to the stage whereby we start taking some quite dangerous drugs in a condition that really was caused by certain chemicals that you've brought into your body that shouldn't have been there in the first place. It's just the reason I mention this is because I've seen a number of cases of people that have been 100% where suddenly um, by changing something in their lifestyle, the heart or the ticker as we say in Australia starts to, starts to tick in, in a very funny way leading to medications which can be actually far worse than, than anything else. So um, before you get to that stage, just think about it a little bit. Now there, there's obviously other reasons why the heart may go a bit funny. So it's always important to you know, identify the right practitioner that can get their mind around why these things happen. And as I've said to you many times, don't be guided by just one opinion. You know, if you can afford it, please, please go and speak to another practitioner in another field altogether to get an opinion as to you know, why something is happening and how you can fix it. Now, just to finish off on this question of irregular heartbeat conditions, another nutrient that I feel very positive about is magnesium. One of the things that you need to understand is that Muscles, if, if you go down to the basic chemistry of how a muscle operates, one of the things you'll see at the lowest level is that when a muscle contracts, okay, when it, when it tightens, there's a release of calcium uh, into the muscle that enables that contraction to take place. And thereafter, as we release the muscle to, to trigger that, even though the brain says release, there's a, a little bit of magnesium released into the muscle that causes relaxation. So think about calcium as being the tightening and magnesium as being the relaxation, okay? As the final endpoint. Obviously, one's brain sends the instruction, but at the very lowest layer of the metabolism, that's what happens. Most people are very high in calcium. Most people are very low in magnesium, and the reason for that is because magnesium years ago um, would have come from the river water and, and from very natural sources. It's uh, also when people ate a lot of plant food because um, the, the central molecule of a chlorophyll, you know, little green things inside of plants, that's the chlorophyll molecule. The center, the center atom of that is a magnesium uh, atom. And so people eating a lot of green plant food are obviously getting reasonable amounts of magnesium. Problem is, a lot of people aren't eating a lot of green foods these days, are they? Leastwise, drinking uh, river water where there was a high level of magnesium being washed into the water. And, and so what we have, therefore, uh, at the same time, people are consuming too much calcium. Um, you know, we're, always, we're told, supposedly, that we should be getting lots of calcium. Don't ask me where that idea came from, because we get plenty of calcium. Um, and so the result is overdosing on calcium and an undersupply of magnesium. And so you can understand, therefore, for some people that manifests itself into various conditions, certainly high blood pressure can be affected because if 
the, the, the actual arteries, if you look at your blood vessels, they are surrounded by little muscles, okay? They, they're able to expand and contract because they have, they're surrounded by, it's almost like a, like a hose, you know, a hose that you have in a garden, which has got muscles around it, a very fine muscle group, and they can relax and they can contract. Now, if you're high in calcium and low in magnesium, you can understand how they become tense and consequently how blood pressure may rise. Ease, in the same way, magnesium relaxes it and, and causes blood pressure to come down. In the case of this irregular heartbeat, where magnesium is important is that magnesium helps in the normal rhythm if the, in terms of the contraction of the, of the heart with the calcium and the relax, re relaxation with the magnesium. And so I often will recommend magnesium as a supplement for most people. Um, somewhere around about 400 to 600 milligrams of, of magnesium per day for an adult would be recommended to provide the balance between their calcium in the body and their magnesium levels uh, to retain uh, a balance that is probably not there unless they're eating the sort of foods, like I say, lots of greens and drinking, you know, uh, expensive mineral water all the time.